Thank you very much. Thank you for coming from you. Thank you very much. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Let's uh, let's get this interview started. I'm pretty excited to uh, speak to our guest today. Hey, everyone in YouTube land. It's Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. You know who it is. It's time for another, a new, a banger of an interview. We have one of the most legendary MCs in grime music, Mr. JME in the building. Thank you very much for coming through and talking with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. No problem. No problem. Love that you're here. Love that you're here at 2 a.m. Your time. Yeah. Uh, you're you're really like keeping it up late for us. But yeah, man. yeah. But you know, it seems Nelly seems never like... made it as well. Nelly didn't make it closely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had you had a bit of an internet issue before the yeah. before the interview, and then you had to sort of head back to your place to to get this break set up. The speed limit, break the speed limit and get back here. But I'm here, man. But you're here, and the and the setup is amazing with uh, all Thank the you. you know LED lights and everything. It's like great color. Thank you very much. I was like, last minute. I thought, you know what? If I'm gonna do it here, do it properly. And yeah, so yeah, I got my little little beam there, little LifeX bulbs in the back. If they if they're watching, give me a little sponsor. But I'm, yeah, man. I'm gonna have to get a, a recommendation from you on that later because like a long, colorful LED light over here, I I, th- I think would do wonders for this room. Frankly, the little beams you, you connect, they just connect together like little Legos, and they just turn on, and you just use the app, control it. I'll change it later. Mm-hmm. Someone in chat is saying vegan gang. Don't don't doubt it. That topic is going to come up later in the interview. There's going to be some <laughs> vegan crossover energy in, in yes, this man. interview. Don't don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. All right. Um, Grime MC, new LP, yeah. came out yeah. earlier this year. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you some questions about it. Yeah, it's been out a little while, but I think this is kind of a significant record for you. I think yeah. you make some pretty... Um, important statements on this record for your career. One song that definitely stuck out to me was the track uh, Change. Uh, A lot of what you said on that cut stuck with me because of what you were talking about in terms of the musical landscape changing, your landscape changing. And and that makes me wonder why in 2020, at this point in your career, five years since I believe your last record, uh, more than 20 years into grime being a genre, you know, a scene, a movement, um, wh- wh- why an album of this style, of this title? Is the attempt here to define it, redefine it, or remind people of what grime is, who you are, and what both of those things stand for? Um, the way I do everything, whether it's rap lyrics, whether it's... Pl- I don't really plan the albums, but the way they end up uh, forming mm. is I just, during my day-to-day life, during as I'm living life, I either make a mental note of something or I write it down. So it could be, I could be in a studio right now with Chip or someone and it'd be like, yeah, like write a bar for this tune. I'll just go into my notes, I'll go wherever and I'll look at all those like random bullet points of things I've written down and find things that work with the vibe that I'm on and then I'll start forming a lyric somehow. And that's the same thing I do with this. Like Grime MC was a title. I don't know when I thought of it. It could have been for anything, but I just thought, that that is the basics. That's that's the basis of what I am. I'm a grime MC. Like that's the core of what I am. Even though I can DJ, I can produce, I can I don't know whatever else I do. You know what I mean? But gra- being a grime MC is what took off for me. If you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, exactly. Like, I'll, I'll do many things: artwork, whatever, digital, video editing, whatever I do, gaming. But what took off for me and what ended up paying my wage, paying my mortgage was becoming a grime MC. So I had the title jotted down. And then as I, I don't, I don't, I don't make, I can't sit down. I'm not one of those people that sits down. I don't go to studio. I don't go to the studio, sit in the studio and listen to beats and then write songs. I, like I said, I jot things down daily. Like right now during this interview, I might think of something, grab my phone and put it down, like something that's been said or whatever. And yeah, so I formulate things over time. So track by track by track, things were just happening. And I thought this is going to end up being a project. It needs a name. And to be honest, on two separate tracks that I had at the time, I probably had like four or five tracks at the time done. On two of them, I said the words Gram MC. And then as I was going through my notes, I saw the word Gram MC, I was thinking, you know what? I have to call this Gram MC. And then it became, like the album became the title, if you know what I mean, rather than the album being done. And then me thinking, oh, what should I call this? Why did I do this? You know what I mean? That, that like, the truth is in the lyrics. That's what I did. That's what I spat about. That's what I was talking about. And I said that twice. 
and I've already jotted it down as a title, it's meant to be. And then the project became Gram MC. So in hindsight, I would say it's like a blueprint for a Gram MC if you want to do, in my opinion as well, because it's just my opinion, I'm not God. So yeah, in my opinion, it's a blueprint for if there's an artist that wants to be like a new artist, a new artist in our, in our genre, there'll be Yizzy, there'll be SBK, like fresh artists coming out now. They can use this album at some point in their career and think, right, I'm gonna like, if, you know what I mean? If they want to formulate an album, they can think, right, how did, like, what, I don't know, like what were the key things? What, what, what was the, the bones of this album? You know what I mean? And they can start plotting how they can make an album in grime from this album. So yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what it meant. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't me saying, um, I don't know, what did you say just now? You said, was it, you gave me options of what it was, what it could have been. <laughs> sort of like, you know, an attempt to uh, define grime. Yeah, I, they, I mean, I, I feel like you kind of answered that with saying it was sort of like a blueprint yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I'm not, I'm not telling someone they're not grime. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to say, they say grime, that what I'm doing is grime. What you're hearing over there is not grime. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But yeah. I just wanted everyone to know that this is my opinion, my blueprint of a grime MC, you know what I'm saying? And nothing more, especially at this time in my career, like you said, because I can do, I can do anything right now. But then I thought, nah, man, like what I love, this is what I love and I'm doing it. And I happen to say grime MC twice. So I thought, yeah, fuck it, man. Can I swear? I can swear on it. Yeah, you can swear. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, totally yeah, fine. Man, like, yeah, grime MC. So that became the title. And then also it became a thing about pride. I became proud of it. I became like, I started to think, yeah, man, like, I don't know, like it became something I could, get behind, if you know what I'm saying. And I started to love the idea of it being called Grime MC. That's when the merch came, that's when everything, the pop-up started happening and stuff. And I thought, yeah, you know what? It became more patriotic from that, but it wasn't intentional from the start. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 not even just a sort of a blueprint as you sort of stated it for the genre. It seems almost like a blueprint for yourself as well. I mean, on tracks like the opening track, you're literally going into the back history of your own life and sort of what brought you to the point where you are now. And even on integrity, there are these consistent themes of you going back to your roots or your core philosophies or the things that you sort of like believe in to be true as far as like, you know, kind of the life you want to lead or, you know, what you believe to be a good choice or a positive outcome for myself or you, you through your lyrics, you also kind of strike me as maybe even a utilitarian type of person who wants to make a decision that will have the greatest amount of good for the outcome for everybody. And, you know, it's, it's it seems like, you know, that's that's sort of a consistent theme too to go back to those ideas and remind yourself of, you know, these are toxic things surrounding me and these are better decisions that I could be making and I will go down this path. Yeah, do you know what? One thing my brother told me, Skip, he said to me, or he said, I don't know if he said it to me, but he said that he likes to spit lyrics about things that everybody thinks, but nobody says. Like everybody can relate to this, but no one's gonna say this on this track. You know what I mean? This is something you say to somebody as you're sitting with them in the back of a car one day just chatting or like, when someone leaves the table and there's two of you left, you'll say, hey, you know what, man, da -da -da, and you speak about something, but he's gonna say it on a track. And I live my life, like I said, I live my life day to day going through doing things. And I think, well, wow, like, I make music. I don't wanna go on this track tomorrow and just say, yeah, man's got, I don't know, you know what I mean? I wanna go and say, this, what just happened just now? Like, you know what I mean? I don't wanna go home now and go into the group message and say, hey, you lot, you know what just happened? Fucking like, whatever, whatever. I wanna say it on a song. I wanna say this on a song, because this is what's really happening to me. So that's what I end up doing. Like, I, it's, like, it's not a conscious thing. I don't, I don't, I don't consciously think, yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna make a song and tell people to do this because this is the right thing to do. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't do that. But I'm in the studio. I'm in the studio. I'm in my room upstairs, and the beat's playing. And I think it would be so sick if I'd have said this. You know, like mm. I should have said that, bro, because this is true. That, like, I'm gonna say it, and I just, you know, and I, I write lyrics that way. Literally, like. It's like a day. It's like a diary. It's like a little diary for me. But yeah. at the same time, I try and be comical and a bit clever with with it. That's all. Hmm. Yeah, and in in a way, even on you know to go back to that opening track, it's almost like your origin story a little bit as well. I mean, at least the way that you portray it. I mean, in terms of where you were at the point in your life when you sort of first got you know started getting into music as far as like a career or something to be performing and making and. Um, you know, again, in terms of where you were and who you were surrounded by, did you feel almost like this is kind of your destiny or where you were going to end up regardless? No, I think that, I think that I'm here right now because of a lot of decisions I've made, hmm. which 
which I, which I consciously make. Like when I make a decision, I think about it. I always say this, by the way, I might say it too many times this interview, but I think about something. I want to think about it. I make a decision. And if I, if I know the decision is right, I'm going there, no matter what pain, what struggle, what, whatever it is, I'm doing it. So it was a lot of that. But then all the time, at the same time, I think it was a lot of luck. And I can only see the luck in hindsight. When I look back and I start to think, wow, like, I ended up with this person. I ended, you know what I mean? I think back to when things are happening, I think anything could have made it not go this direction. You know what I'm saying? So then what I do is I think, I think for, that, for that track in particular, that was one of the first tracks I made as well. Hmm. And it, was, it wasn't meant, like, I've got, a, I've got a thing of making a 96 bar track. I've been doing it for years. And that track wasn't 96 bars. It was just shy of 96 bars. So I added on the intro, Man Was Trapped in the end. That wasn't part of the track before. Hmm. It just started with, I was, I was like, brat, had a Nokia 7110 and it had WAP. That's how it started. But then when I realized, well, I'm like eight bars short of 96, I just added the intro on the beginning to make it 96 because it, it definitely felt like it should be one of the, one of the, I was going to say trilogy, but one of the however many 96 bars I've done. Hmm. But yeah, literally that track was me thinking, I made the beat and I love listening to the beat and I thought I need to say something on this tune that actually has some substance because this isn't a track just for, the, for a club or for, you know what I mean? So then I thought, but how I'm living right now, at the time I wrote it, I was at one of the happiest points in my life. Like I've just secured a place to live. I've just got married. I've, do you know what I mean? But this track needs to have some pain. This track needs to have something. So I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna speak about everything I went through to get here because right now is the best time to speak about it because my mind is so clear. I understand what's, what happened, do you know what I mean? When, when, so, when the things I spoke about in that track, getting evicted and having to spend my student loan and mom's rent and stuff like that, when it was happening, I wasn't clear in the mind. I wasn't clear enough in my mind to say it. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to hide it at the time as well because it was beef as well. It was like stuff was happening on the street that I didn't want to speak about. I couldn't speak about at the time. At the same time, stuff was happening in my family I couldn't speak about at the time. You know what I mean? I can remember, I can remember at that time in my life, when it was happening, I, may, I remember walking to the, to the train station to go to uni and I wrote a song called Eat Junk, which is on Blam, I think, my, one of my second album called Eat Junk. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you're listening to that track now, that intro track, listening to the pain, listening to what I was going through. But when I was going through that, my mind was talking about eating junk and you know what I mean? Because I was trying to get away from it. So yeah, I think now I was, I was at the perfect time right now to think clearly and think of all the things I've gone through to get to this final outcome, not final, but this current outcome of my life and document it on a track. And I didn't understand what I was doing until I finished the track as well. I finished the track, showed it to Skep in the car once as I dropped him somewhere. And his reaction made me think, rah. Like, it made me realise, rah, like, you know what I mean, what I'd done. Because when I was doing it, I wasn't thinking, I was literally just, I wasn't thinking of the outcome of the track. I was just thinking of this is the time to document, document this one thing. So yeah, that, that track had to be the intro. There was no two ways about it. No two ways about it. And, and I couldn't think of a video for it either. I've done lots of videos, but that track, I couldn't think of a video for it because it was too close to me. So I had to use like a flip book kind of style video. And just film it upstairs and in this house upstairs. I filmed a quick flip book with all my photos on the table because I needed the million, two million pounds to do a video to that track and get a younger actor of me. You know what I mean? It was, it was that's a personal <laughs> track. So yeah, yeah, that had, to be, that had to be the intro. You know, but before I even move on to the next question, you know, sort of the aside that you said there about uh, showing the track to your brother, it's got to be like pretty amazing and valuable personally as an artist to be able to sort of run such a song by not only somebody who's taken so seriously in the grime scene, but also somebody who in a familial sense is so close to you and you could sort of like literally check all these experiences against him and, you know, be like, this is my life. You as my brother are so intimately intertwined into that. Um, you know, I mean, it's, that's, that's, that's gotta, you know, be a much different experience than just running it past some random DJ and be like, uh, bruh, you know, is, is this good? Definitely. Also, I don't really run my music past anyone ever. Yeah. Anyway. Like I remember, I remember my first album I did famous question mm -hmm. mark. I didn't run it past no one. I remember showing it to everyone. It was finished. I showed everyone. I remember I was in my five series. I was showing everybody. No, I was in my little A class. I was showing everybody, all my friends, even my brother, everyone, the whole album at once. Like they never heard anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not someone that runs music past people. I'm, I, I don't make music for the industry. So I don't, I don't, need, I don't need approval before I, you know what I mean? I don't need to check it's good before I put it out because I'm yeah. making it. Once it's good by me, it's good. But the thing about that track was, like you said, 
he was he he every single thing in that track he knows he experienced he knows he knows exactly the time when I fell asleep on the motorway because he was one he was the cause of it slightly because he drove there and then he drove to a show and then he stayed there and I I had to get back he knew I had to get back so I had to illegally drive back even though he probably illegally drove there but I had to illegally drive back from like Leeds or something and I was mad tired so like so many different things on that track he just knows he understands and he was there for also but another weird thing about me and Skep's relationship is like maybe lyrics wise like we kind of not can guess but we can kind of gauge what we're talking about lyric wise but production wise we're so alienated like I do not see Skep to produce any beats he does not see me produce like since we were since we were living in the same house like 10 years ago or however long ago I have not seen him produce a beat but I know when I hear a Skepta beat and I know that I love Skepta's beats you know what I'm saying same with him like he doesn't see me produce beats but he just knows when it's my he can tell when it's my production and that's something we don't share so it, like it's always sick when I get to hear a new Skep beat or he gets to hear a new Jamie beat and the, and the lyrics at the same time was was uh, like a wow factor and where I was, dro I was dropping him to a club so it was like it was a rush but when I, when I got there, like everyone's trying to get in, the security's trying to get everyone in, but he stayed in the car to hear the song finish. And he was like, no, nah, this is mad. And I could like, just that little, you know what I mean? That little bit of feedback from him, I thought, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I don't run trains past no one, but that little feedback from Skep, I was like, yeah, you get me? This is definitely the intro. And at, at that point, I probably had like two tracks done or probably just that one track done. But I thought, whatever's happening, this is the intro. This is deep. I knew from there. Yeah, I mean, your respective production styles are pretty... Uh... I mean, you know, not different in a bad way, but I mean, it's like there's yeah. definitely different personality types to, you know, the way yeah. that you guys approach production. I mean, you know, as, as, as far as like not spoiling that for one another, is that maybe partially out of a need to, you know, you, you, you talk about it sort of, you know, being a private kind of thing. Is, is that sort of out of, out of a necessity to kind of maintain that uniqueness and sort of like not bleed over, not cross over, not sort of like take in any influence that you might not want to take in and sort of, you know, maintain your own identity artistically? I don't know, you know, I think it's, a, I think it's almost spiritual production. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Like we've been brought up in exactly the same household with exactly the same uh, surroundings. Mm -hmm. So our production at the beginning was so similar. And also production was like, a, it was like, it's like a, um, a journey, like we're on a journey, like exploring, the software, for instance, Fruity Loops, when we was using that, was that was finding out together. It was like, oh, right, you can do that. Oh, you can do this. You can, okay, this plugin, you can, like, we're finding things out together. But then your journey's split as you get more independent. Your journey's split. Whereas lyrics, our journeys are similar and they kind of stay the same because, like, you can write lyrics anywhere. You can listen. I don't know. Lyrics is the weird one. Like, we'd be at studio together writing lyrics. He, he spits his lyrics. I'm like, oh, yeah, I clocked what you did there. And I spit my, it's like something we can do together, like a social thing. Whereas production is, like meditation if you know what i mean it's like when skeps producing he's got his headphones on he'll be in my house here and it's on so far headphones on just you know what i mean with his laptop and when i'm producing i'm upstairs in the room no one disturb me i'm just making you know what i mean so like it's, it's something that we i don't know i can't explain why but we're just naturally by default we're just separate with our production hmm. and but it's something that it's one of my one of the things i admire from him most is his production you know what I mean? But it's something I don't get to see him do. I don't know why he does that. I don't know why he done this. Oh, why did he use those hi-hats on this tune? Or like, I listen, or I, listen to a, I listen to a track with him and AJ Tracy the other day that he made the beat and I only just clocked something in the beat. I was thinking, this is so cold, the way he dropped. Anyway, it's long, but I clocked something in his beat. I was like, this is so sick. Like, and I forget that he does that. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. It's something weird, but yeah, production wise, I love when Skepta shows me a new tune he's made or when or I know he respects when I show him a new tune. And I made the beat, you know what I'm saying? And when he gives me feedback on that, that's what I find more important than anything else, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Um, to bring it back to grime as a topic and sort of this project as almost like your own personal blueprint for that, yeah. um, you know, obviously from the statements you made earlier, you're not a gatekeeper. You're not trying to tell other people what to do or how they need to define the genre for themselves. But, um, you know, just from your own perspective as somebody who's been... Uh, you know, involved in the scene for as long as you have, like, where currently do you see the style in its evolution again, after a few decades and, uh, you know, at this point where again, you know, you're coming up with your, your own blueprint for it. You know, we've moved past the point where the greats of the genre have been defined, 
uh, you came through shortly after in your own way and uh, sort of like wh- wh- where do you see currently right now the style moving sonically and even artistically in terms of the you know new generation of people who may be picking it up how I see it is yeah like I was making the, mu- the music I'm making right now I was making it before any names were banded around so there was no name like it was, it was UK Garage House and Garage Jungle Drum and Bass and that's what we were listening to. But we were writing lyrics and spitting lyrics to like a more darker garage, if you know what I'm saying. And we didn't care about a name. But it was just the street culture. We are kids that are hanging around on the street day and night. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to put that into our music however we can. A bit of influence from dancehall, a bit of influence from rap, a bit, a bit of influence from, like I said, uh, drum and bass and jungle and garage, you know what I'm saying? We're just, it's like a melting pot, London hype. We're just trying to do something. So yeah, we was on pirate radio stations. That's that's where we like owned our craft, like going to radio stations that are set up in someone's kitchen or, or like some derelict flat or, you know what I mean? Like just some soundproof room, two decks and a, and a mixer and a microphone. You pay your little five pounds and you go on there for two hours or an hour. You do your set. You broadcast they're literally like, a two, three mile radius, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't a big deal, but that's where we got our craft. That's where we got our craft in our scene. So to me, the scene is sparring. Like our scene, I see it as sparring. Like if someone's like an MMA MMA fighter sparring in the gym, that's what I see our scene as. And sometimes there are clashes. So there is actually a main event, a main fight. Sometimes there are clashes, people do clash. But literally being on radio, listening to someone spit a bar, hearing what they've done, the DJ re- re- reloads it, and then they spit a bar again. You're like, this is so crazy. Like, I can't believe you just said that. And then you get an idea and like you bounce off each other's energy. That is what grime is. Before, we, we call it grime, but I'm talking about just our scene, full stop, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is to me, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I think we're missing now, partly because of lockdown, but also partly because music has gone digital radio station like the whole the whole scene has been like bought by the industry in a way like no matter like somebody will something like I'll, I'll see like an artist that will just drop a video on grm daily or something unsigned mad views crazy feedback and then they'll be signed in like two weeks like labels jump on people now you know what i mean like the industry just knows how valuable the culture is and it's so hard for the culture to just thrive on its own and that's what I think we need. So right now in the UK, grime, I think we need to have that back. So I, that's why I tried to do Grime MCFM. It's literally pop-up street performances of like just the decks, like I said, two decks, mixer, speaker, that is it. A little backboard, a little floor carpet, set up anywhere in the street, do a set, a crowd comes around you. Somebody gets up, says, can I spit a bar? Yeah, come on, spit a bar. And just get that energy back. And sometimes we do get it back. Sometimes at live shows, but there aren't, there aren't enough, especially during lockdown now. So yeah, uh, the scene we have now in the UK is UK drill. And that's what the new youngers are coming up on, which is like influence from Chicago drill, but it's changed, it's been warped. It's got the baseline from, it's like a UK bass, like a, almost a UK, we had a genre called baseline. It's, it's almost like a UK baseline bass, like a warped bass, a flipping, a grime tempo with a, with a skip to it and a UK, uh, a UK attitude, a UK arrogance, a UK street. You know what I mean? Vibe to it. And that's what's popping right now. But the same thing's gonna happen again. I keep telling everyone, same thing's gonna happen again. The people that have got the biggest personalities, the biggest followings from that genre are gonna be here in 10 years. Everyone else is gonna disappear and they'll, they'll, the new youngers will come up on a new genre. But it's always based on UK street culture. And that's what we need to focus on. I think more than the music, the views, the streams, the, you know what I mean? The, the, the plaques, the whatever. I think we need to focus on uh, uh, incubating and flipping, looking after the street culture, the vibe, you know what I mean? Like what our parents, what, I don't know everyone else, but what my parents have anyway, like I used to have aunties and uncles come to my house, turn table, that's why I've got a turntable right there, I will turn the camera around, but I don't want to mess up your the view, but I've got a turntable there, my vinyl, you know what I mean? So like sometimes you just put a vinyl on, press play, dance party vibes in your house. That is missing from the scene because right now everyone's focused so much on their YouTube video. I mean, what car they've got, what model they've got, what views they've got, who's, you know what I mean? So I reckon we just need to make sure we look after, don't care what it's called, grime, garage, uh, drill, jungle, wherever we're going with it, whatever's next, we need to just look after the UK. I know it's a bit biased because I'm from the UK, but the UK uh, 
culture, the UK culture. We need to really look after it and make sure that that doesn't get poached. You know what I mean? Because the music can get poached all it wants. Like, but I want the culture to still be raw, still be true, still be honest, and still be accessible by everybody to enjoy. And then new music comes from it. Because that's where the music comes from. So yeah, sorry about this. Sorry about my long answers to your questions. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm sorry, but no, no. I, I, I honestly, I absolutely love it. You're, you're, you are actually answering questions I had already written, sort of ahead of <laughs> asking them because you're going sort of on these tangents. But like, yeah. just to define it and put a pin in it. Yeah. Um. You know, in your opinion, is the youth's embrace of this new wave of UK drill is that leaving grime in a position where maybe it has less artists from the next generation willing to embrace it? And if so, does that even matter? Because, you know, in your opinion, is is it not significant what the genre or what the musical style is, as long as at the end of the day, it ends up being a celebration of UK street culture? Yes. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter what the label is, as long as that's what it's coming from and that's where its roots are. Yeah, perfect. Because we shouldn't, people shouldn't be worried about if a genre is doing this or if a genre is going here or whatever, especially once a genre has cemented itself. Once it's cemented itself, that's it. Like when it's on its way to cementing itself and becoming something that can make a platinum record or make a sellout of a certain festival, or you know what I mean? Once it's on its way there, yeah, back it all the way. But once it gets there, you don't have to worry about it no more. You don't have to worry if, I don't know, R&B is dead or if, you know what I mean? You haven't got to worry if, I don't know, uh, Dance all was dead. You can't call something dead or care about it no more because it's done its thing. It's it's there. It's cemented. And if there are new genres and there are new people doing new things, push that, push it, and get them to the point where they're there. And you know what I mean? Because like I said, like a big artist. I'm just talking UK. A big artist in the UK that was from the garage scene, a big crew, heartless crew, also solid crew. You know what I mean? Asha D from Top Boy, like doing big things no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So like, if I'm I can do a song with. Uh, Bushkin or my emo from Heartless Crew and it's just a song we're doing with his vibes in and the same way I'm in the grime scene and then say not me don't even use me use Skip or use Kano in the grime scene and then use anyone from Drill now you can do a song with Kano that's big, or Lethal B or anyone that's popping you know what I'm saying we need to get the new people that are coming up to the point where they are fully established and and cemented in the scene so that they don't have to worry no more and people will start saying their genres uh, not in the limelight or whatever. It doesn't matter about the whole genre. It's there. If somebody comes out tomorrow and wants to do gram, do it. AJ Tracy, he come out. He's, he's got. He's done like two garage tunes now, and they've both been high charters, getting played nonstop. You know what I'm saying? And that's like the genre before us. And he's doing that. You can do it if you want. You ain't got. You haven't got to worry about where it's going or whatnot. You just need to make sure that you cement the people from the culture, put them up there to let people know. Yep, yeah, they are here to stay. Boom. Cool. Who's next? You know what I mean? And then we have a long list of people and you can keep doing whatever you want. And then the newest people that come out can pick and choose from all the authentic genres from the street culture we've brought through and do what they want. They can merge, they can merge some and have a track like Tiny Temper did back in the day when he had a Pass Out, which was a massive hit with grimy roots he came in. Then at the end, it switched to a mad drum and bass uh, break. You know what I'm saying? You can do what you want. You can do what you want with it. But yeah, I think people are just so patriotic and they want to protect it so much that they want to say, yeah, like, this isn't dead. This is going to do this. This is, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about that too much, man. Like, especially because I'm me and I'm in it and I'm actually me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll probably get it if I was a fan watching. I'll be like, no, man, I want, I want to see my favorite artist shine now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I reckon like you, you hit the nail on the head. I'm rambling off again. But yeah, exactly what you said. All the genres have come through and you don't have to worry about them. We need to worry about the culture that's creating the artists that are making these genres and keep that bubbling, keep the pot, keep the cauldron bubbling to keep to keep producing new people coming out to do it. And they can pick and choose whatever they want to do. It doesn't matter. That's what I think anyway. That's my opinion. Yeah. No, I mean, it doesn't really seem like there should be any animosity between the two different genres or scenes or whatever you want to call it, especially since whenever I hear a grime artist inviting, you know, a, a UK drill artist onto a track, like chemistry wise, uh, there's, there's always gelling going on. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, as you said, like the, this new wave is sort of a menagerie of different genres, just like grime was in its inception. Like the two aren't really that far removed, um, you know, but, but in your opinion, um, you know, moving past the evolution from here, because the next step is now you have suddenly all of these Americans specifically out of the New York area, sort of like borrowing and sort of taking from the sound and, and it hitting really huge over here. And 
I mean, while the acknowledgement and the connection is obviously there, do you see, you know, sort of like artistically bridges being built, you know, sort of like over this? Or do you think as far as like execution and performance, the New York scene is just kind of doing its own thing with a sound that is kind of coming full circle in a way? Uh, again, my opinion on it is it's a good thing. I love it because mm. obviously it was inspired. It was inspired from the U.S., so for them to come and see what we've done with what we've been inspired by them and then to love it and to, to take it, you usually things get ridiculed. Like, oh, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why have you, like, why did you call it drill? This is, you know what I mean? Like it's so much, I've seen so much ridiculing from anything, from people just not getting it. You know what I'm saying? People, did, people didn't get Giggs's verse on Drake's uh, tune. They were like, not, oh, like people trying to do me. You know what I mean? Not people at all. Not getting- and, and, and honestly, go, going even further back than that, like the hip hop, well, you know, nearly every hip hop scene or rather hip hop sort of as, as a larger form in the U.S. has written off any blend of hip hop and anything else or grime that's been coming out of the U.K. for years. So yeah. for there to be like this huge wave of a strain of that coming out of the U.K. at this point is is kind of huge culturally in a way. Yeah. Also, we're trying Like sometimes people are in the U.K. actually trying to break the states. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. are trying to like... You know what I'm saying? Whereas this time, man, they weren't even trying. They were just literally doing their own thing, but it was close enough to the vibe that the US thought, oh, this is cold. This is, we can fuck with this. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's a good thing. Like I can't, I don't see, I don't see no negatives yet as of yet. It's a good thing. And um, yeah, I haven't kept my finger on the pulse. I haven't seen anyone actually uh, uh, c- collaborate and do anything. Actually, you know what? I have, man. Is it G4 Boys? Hmm. G4 Boys. I think it's the G4 Boys. They have. And I'm, yeah, but I haven't kept my finger on the pulse anyway, but I will, I will keep, I'll keep my eye out as, I, as time goes on. But again, I'm really looking out for the new artists in the UK more than anything. But yeah, I will keep my eye out. But yeah, I, think it's a, I do definitely think it's a good thing. There's nothing bad from it. People, obviously, people online will talk and say, oh, like, they need more, like they need to recognize that because uh, you know what it is the mislabeling because that happened with Graham as well like a lot of artists came out they could be Afro beat Afro trap flipping Afro swing uh, UK rap uh, UK drill and they'll just get labeled as Graham because journalists cannot be bothered to even figure out what's going on they just say oh this Graham artist you know what I mean anyone's a Graham artist if you just hmm. fit the the visual description of a Graham artist and that's what's happening now with the UK drill beats they're getting labeled as US drill or New York drill or whatever you know what I mean when the producer or whatever is actually from Birmingham or London or you know what I mean mm. so uh, that's the only thing that's the only discrepancy that's the mislabeling of stuff but that's going to happen but other than that I reckon yeah I reckon um, we can go from strength to strength man like it's all it's all about respect at the end of the day like I said there, people in the US weren't getting it before they're getting it now and they're respecting it now. And that's all really matters. It's about respect, man, in my opinion. Um, moving on from there into some, uh, you know, more personal stuff and opinions that you're very open about in your own music. Um, I, at first off, I wanted to ask you about uh, veganism for a second, because it's yeah. uh, not often that I get to uh, do an interview or a conversation with a vegan artist who's so obviously like, you know, out there with, uh, the, you know, their their dietary choices. Like, how exactly did you come into uh, you know, this philosophy, you know, sort of what drove you, the, you know, the usual questions, is it a mix of health? Is it ethics? You know, what, what, what exactly put you in this, uh, in this mindset where you're, you know, not consuming animal products? The same thing I said before, when I think about something for the first time, I actually really think about it and I make a decision, I just stick with it. It's like a, it's like a mild OCD I've got. And, uh, yeah, like I was brought up Nigerian, first generation in the UK. My mum and dad, my mum's got a book coming out, actually. You can read it and you'll find out how I got to this planet. But yeah, my mum and dad, uh, Nigerian, Lagos born. My mum's village, she's Igbo. My dad's tribe is Yoruba. They shouldn't be together, but they met in the UK. They didn't care. They got together and they had us here. They fed us nigerian delicacies i was eating things that you would feed your dog tripe you'd feed your dog you know what i mean i had i had flipping chicken foot hanging out the pot fish heads in my fridge like I was, and it was food to me full stop oxtail cow foot anything any part of the animal is food because it's because i'm coming from a background of survival not thriving and you know what i mean 
having an app on your phone to get food to your door. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm like survival background, like tribal background, cool. And I, I'm, I'm like, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? If I go to Nigeria, I'm not going to say everyone in Nigeria, all be vegan, <laughs> stop sacrificing goats. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Make all this land for, like, I ain't going to tell people what to do. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But yeah, one day growing up, I was 27 years old, 27 years of eating meat, drinking milk, eating eggs, everything, every animal. I watched one video from a guy called Gary Yurovsky. It was uh, it was called the best video ever or something like that. And it was like a it was at a university giving a lecture on veganism. And the thing is, I, I've watched I see it for the first time. I remember watching it, pressing play, and heard him say a few things. Looked at him, I thought, who is this guy in sandals? Like he's chatting shit. Like he does not he has not got the same background as me. We don't have the same genetic makeup. I don't think I can survive with what he eats. Like I don't get this guy. I, I was kind of personally offended by how he was talking. I thought, nah, fuck this guy, and I turned it off. But then one of my friends, Tim. He watched it and then he tweeted me and said, Jamie, you need to watch this. And I thought, oh, fucking hell, like, I can't have him watch it and me not watch it. Like, I need to watch it now. Like, he's seen it. I'll, I remember I, I went to watch it, I stopped, let me watch it. And I watched it. And then from that second, I finished watching that video. I haven't consumed another anything from any animal to this day. That, that's, that from the second I watched that video, I was like, okay, this guy, he said this. I don't believe him. I don't believe, first of all, I didn't believe him. So I'm gonna do my research. I started researching everything he was saying, I'm thinking, wow, that's true. Wow, that's true. Wow, they kill chickens just to act like they put them in a grinder or like, like what they do. You know when they, you know when they, uh, when they've got, what are they, tree surgeons that cut down trees and like, or cut the branches and put them in that grinder at the side of the road. They do that to chickens just because they're male and they want females for eggs. And I'm thinking, what? That's, I didn't think that was true, but it's true. Okay cows like milk they have to be pregnant so they have to what like, i watched artificial insemination and all this that's like, crazy i'm thinking this is nuts like all i thought of was just like you know milk cereal like i thought it was normal i thought this is crazy so it's actually true what he's saying okay let me try it i thought let me try it went for the first week eating rice with like dormio pasta stirring sauce and stirring it in and eating it thinking shit man i'm gonna be losing weight like this is crazy like like what am i doing i didn't know anything no dietary nothing and um, yeah, after a week, it became fun. It start, I started meeting friends. I started a friend that was obviously vegan and showed me, do this, cook this, go here, shop here, do this, or come to this restaurant, do this. And it started becoming a thing that I could do. And I was traveling the world, touring, obviously, and doing things. I had an app on my phone, Happy Cow. Any country I went to, Happy Cow, search for vegan restaurants, going tasting all the food everywhere. It, was, I was, it became something to do. I was like, this is sick. And then, yeah, like literally, that was 2012, 2012. I can't remember how long ago, but yeah till today and now it's just like, so I don't know if it was ethics, what, I don't know what it was. It was like just truth. I think I'm just, I think if something's true, I can't, my brain won't let me go against it if I know it's true, especially if I research it and spend time. The second I go to go against it, the second I go to just eat a flipping, a biscuit that's got whey powder and I was in my head, I think, what are you doing? Like, I can't do it, I can't lie to myself. So yeah, but not everyone's the same because I think that's all everybody needs. So like, I was telling my friends like, yeah, you know, and they'll be like, yeah, I hear that. And I'll just go and eat chicken. I think, oh. not everyone's not everyone's got that. Like, I've got a weird thing in my head. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that, that's, yeah. that's a personality trait not everybody has. Like a yeah. lot of people are kind of fine with living a lie. And, and you know, it's sometimes there's other like, personal and emotional baggage that comes along with being able to do that. That's really hard to uh, sort of analyze, you know, as, as you were saying earlier, when you were talking about that video that sort of exposed you to a lot of these ideas and sort of not taking how the guy was saying what he was saying and sort of looking at it in terms of like a difference of background, a difference of culture, a difference of upbringing class, whatever you want to call it. Um, sometimes th those, those, Topics can be really difficult to navigate when advocating for veganism, or at least in the past, like vegans who find themselves in a position to promote these ideas are very bad at sort of promoting those ideas because they don't sort of take into account how lines of race and lines of culture and lines of economics make it more difficult for some people to embrace those ideas or want to, you know, um, you know, take on that lifestyle. As you said, if you were in Nigeria or really any other situation where you'd be fighting to survive, you're not going to be like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to eat this or eat that or the other thing. Exactly. Because, yeah, you exactly. know, ultimately, at the end of the day, like a lot of what is so bad about the consumption of meat in the modern world is just the agricultural industry and the way that animals are raised and how destructive it is to the environment and the sheer amount of like, you know, 
murder. I mean, you know, you yeah. can't really call it anything else that, that, you know, comes out of that system. Um, you know, and, and once you sort of understand that and sort of come to the realization that, you know, if I have the means and the ability and I'm living in a country or a place where it allows me the privilege, cause you know, it is a privilege to, you know, sort of take advantage of modern agriculture, you know, the vegetable and fruit end of it anyway, and, you know, sort of separate myself outside of that, you know, I mean, it, at least some good can come of that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. And, you know, I thank you for kind of being open about your, your journey with, with that. Um, yeah, no, like I said, I don't, I, I, I don't ever go into a track thinking I'm going to say this, you know what I mean? But then if I, like the same way, I don't know, like if, I don't know, if somebody buys a new car, someone buys a Rolls Royce flipping Wraith and they find out the umbrella's in the door and they think, oh my God, like, and they want to say it in a lyric. They want to say, man, I'll cover up one of Ella's, I pull up with my girl Ella and the door of my umbrella. And they just want to say it because they just found that out. The same way when I found out about veganism and I found out about whatever, like anything, I think, wow, like, not, people don't know this. You know what I mean? Like, I want to say more. I want to talk about flipping, sticking the, your arm in a big glove up a flipping cow's anus trying to find the right place to stick the syringe of frozen semen and you know what I mean I wish I could say that I probably could say that frozen semen I could say something you know what I mean like <laughs> just I want to say it because I think people don't know that people just drink milk and just have cereal and coffee and they don't know the madness that goes just to get you milk it's just it's just a white fluid just to you, there's milk you know what I mean like, it's just crazy dumb it's so stupid but yeah so when I find something out if I'm in a studio and I look at my notes and I think, oh yeah, Jamie, you said frozen semen and I don't know, supposed to be there, I don't know, whatever. I'll be like, I've got to say this today on this track. You know what I mean? It's better, I like, I, and I like doing it on tracks. I'm not meant to. So like, I'm like the number one feature. I say this all the time. I don't know if it's true, but I'm the number one featured artist in the UK. Like, I've, done a, I've done features on everybody's music in the world from Ed Sheeran to flipping, like I said, SBK, the newest artist. Like everybody, I've got a feature of everyone because I don't know why. I don't know. I I'm, must be disapproachable. But when hey, I do yeah, a feature even, of someone, even Even if you don't know it's true, if you keep saying it, that's manifesting. So you're probably yeah. making it, you're, you're making it more true because if people- Number one featured like, artist in the UK. Yeah. Trust me. Everyone. If, Stormzy, if, name someone. I've, I've, I've got a feature. So if, when I do features, you, I like you, to do that. I like to drop things that people be like, why have you said that on this tune? You know what I mean? I like that. But also, if you keep saying that, that reminds people that, oh, he must be open for a feature. Let me reach out. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's also probably an advertisement. Why. It's an advertisement, too. Yeah. <laughs> probably you, why, um, but yeah, literally everyone. I have uh, one more question I wanted to ask you. But before I get into that, I wanted to uh, remind everybody that uh, uh, you yourself can throw some questions at Jamie as well. We're going to get into a fan question section in a second you can use the tab underneath this stream uh the q a tab to throw a question out there and we'll uh, uh we'll get it to him we're going to go through a few of those in a second but uh the last thing i wanted to ask you is uh, about some of the comments that you've made so far about sort of the way the internet is currently impacting the music scene uh, some of your comments on social media on your recent album as well i mean you seem like somebody who is pretty technology and internet savvy. You seem like somebody who understands the power and the significance of the internet in terms of breaking music, spreading music, the importance of having an online brand. I mean, obviously you've crossed over with guys like KSI and, uh, you know, you yourself have done a little bit of the Twitch thing, but simultaneously, you know, you'll throw comments out there about how skeptical you are of like, you know, platforms like be it Instagram or, you know, the toxicity of like a platform like Twitter or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in your view, the internet and social media in terms of its impact on music and, and even streaming as well, because, you know, you've been pretty vocal about not feeling like streaming has kind of proven to be the best model for musicians. You know, do you mm -hmm. feel like the current internet landscape is sort of like a net positive or a net negative for, you know, you personally and musicians at large right now? For me personally, it's a net positive. Hmm. Like, but the thing is, this is the thing. You, you said so many things there. I'm trying to, I want yeah, to answer. It's a lot. Sorry, Basically. sorry. It's, it's a lot, but I know you've said a lot on this topic. Yeah, so. I have, I have. Do you know what it is? I was, I was speaking about it. I speak about it all the time. I was speaking about it today. Someone asked me, why do I have Twitter and I not have Instagram, not have whatever. I have to explain it. To, I have to explain everything. What it is, is what it is, is. I'm, like I said, I think about what's going on all the time. So I got Twitter because I had an iPhone. I had the iPhone 1, the original iPhone, and everyone had Blackberries and they were like, BBM, BBM, Blackberry Messenger. I never had that. So the App Store came out and I was looking for anything that was like BBM. You could just message people that had iPhones. And I found an app called, called 
Twinkle. I found an app called Twinkle. It's not an app store no more. And it was basically message on this thing. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was Twitter at the time. So I signed up to Twinkle. I was mess everyone on Twinkle had an iPhone. So it was like this everyone on iPhone was messaging in some random forum. It was just something to do at the time. And then as time went on, people was like, get a Twitter. I checked out Twitter and I thought, well, I'm already signed up. And I checked it and it was my Twinkle account. I was like, okay, I'll use this. That's why I don't follow no one. Because by the time I checked, I had followers. I checked, I was already talking to people on there and things, you know what I mean? So, and nobody I knew had it. So no one I knew had this. It was just me, message on there and there. And then, um, yeah, so as time's gone on, I've used Twitter the same way with the same app. Because I used, I, I got an app called Twitter Fon after, which now called Echo Fon. And that's the same app I use. I don't use the Twitter app. When Echo Phone goes down or something happens with Echo Phone, I've got to use the Twitter. Or, yeah, if I want to post a video that's like longer than a minute, because Twitter doesn't let other apps do that. So I have to use the Twitter app to do that. When I go on the Twitter app to post just a video, I post the video, then it says verified. I clicked it, it shows me everybody verified that's talking to me, retweeting me. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know Snoop Dogg follows me. Oh my God, I didn't know. And I start thinking, oh shit, like, who's this? Who's this? Why is she saying that? I don't know her. I go on a thing. I'm like, oh, that's that. The okay, and I and then I'm, I'm lost. Then I've come out. Then it then it says um, it says what does it say again? Yeah, it, sh it shows you people liking your thing. Like they've liked this, they've liked that. Oh, they favorite this. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And, and it, I think like what's like it's making me do stuff that I don't do. You know what I mean? Like normally I just go on Echo Phone. I say what I want to say. Put my phone down. Pick it up again, I might say 60. I'll click 60, I'll read 60 people's comments, like they're laughing, joking, whatever, whatever. Then I say something else, I put it down. I'm not hooked, you know what I mean? So I think it's down to the individual, how you use the internet. This is, this is aside from music, how, how you use the internet, it's down to the individual. And I think I use it in a good way. I use Twitter in a good way. I don't think anybody should follow anybody or I think Twitter should hide who's following who and how many people, that's, that's irrelevant. You don't need to know that. If you want to follow someone, you can. Otherwise, just search and look what people are saying and get off there. It's just an app. It's just a website. It's not. It's not. Uh, like it's not like your passport. It's not something legal. It's not like a, you know. What I mean, people think it's like a, a, a thing you need to have. Like you have an address, you have a driver's license, you have a Twitter account, you have an Instagram. It's not. It's just a website. Like, detach a bit from it, man, and just use it to benefit you to get make you pass a bit of time and get off. So I think I use it correctly. That's why I use it. Instagram. I think this is the thing. I think some apps, some social media are made on purpose by smart people to play on that thing that humans have, that I have when I go on a Twitter app and I start going, oh shit, what's going on? People realize that's a thing. Like, oh, people actually get hooked on it and they make apps and they make things just to keep you on the app. I think Instagram is made just to keep you on there, looking at it, thinking, oh, I want this. I want to be like that. Oh, that's fake anyway. Look at that. Why she got that? Oh, she's an idiot. Oh, who's, you know what I mean? It's made to make, it makes you do that. It's made to make you do that. Hmm. It's not made as if it's just like, oh, it's just a photo book and like, you can just have your friends on there. Don't worry about it. It pushes things at you, like explore page. Like, it makes you want to do it. It makes you want to be like that person. It makes you want to, you know what I mean? It makes you, oh, look, go in there, taking a picture there. Okay, I'm going to go to that. I'm going to Winter Wonderland. I'm going to take a picture by that big wheel. I'm going to, like, it makes you do all these things that you don't know you're doing. You don't even know, you don't say it. Your brain just does these things in the background as you're looking at all it, like, it feeds off it. So I think yeah, I mean, the, 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 the formula to these websites isn't simply that you are following something and then as something pops up from that account, it shows it to you. I mean, I know I personally, just because I interact with a lot of fans on like Instagram, for example, I follow a lot of people back. But the thing is, like, how is it that I'll follow a few thousand people? But whenever I go into my feed, I'm only being shown like accounts that maybe in the past few days I've liked a post from. And mm. it'll be a single account and I'll be in my feed and I'll see like five, six, seven, eight posts like from the same account all at once in a row. And I'll look at them and I'll see that these have been posted like hours within each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no reason that they should all be getting thrown in my face at once. You know what I mean? But that's the way the algorithms work. It's like they devise based on your reactions. These are the things that you like the most. These are the things that you interact with the most. Um, so we're just going to show you nothing but that and nothing else. And in that, you know, that's a part of the addiction process. And then as you were saying, like the reactions and sort of the interactions that you'll get based on the things that you say on social media, it becomes kind of like a slot machine almost, you know, you'll throw something out there and sometimes yeah. it'll get a million hits. Sometimes it won't get any hits. Sometimes it'll get a ton of weird and funny reactions that'll keep you just like constantly engaged. Like what the hell is this person saying? I have to respond or I have to read the next thing somebody says. Yeah, and also I'm an adult and I can I can recognize these things and think, okay, cool. 
I'm not going to pick up my phone. I'm not going to go on Twitter in the morning. I'm going to get up in the morning and make breakfast. You know what I mean? But if, if I was 15 when this came out, if I was 15 and the iPhone 11 Plus came out and I've got it with Instagram, like Snapchat, all these things, I'm like, it's, it's messing with me. You know what I mean? It's messing with me. I'm going to be losing friends in real life. I'm, I, I, I don't know, but I heard that people don't, kids don't even make friendships like we used to nowadays you know what i mean it's like it's based online like people's friendships are just like they get made and they break because you didn't follow me back you didn't like my thing like it's for kids it's it's damaging i think we're like a test obviously we're not we are a test but it's weird because we're testing on ourselves Hmm. the internet and social media we're the first generation and we're testing it on ourselves with no restrictions so all the things we're seeing now, all the crazy stories you see now of things happening, like the things you see happening on Facebook Live and like Facebook is just number one. Like if a story, can, if a story, a news headline has Facebook in it, it's just crazy. You know what I mean? Like the things that you see happening, it's like, it's the result of our generation being exposed to this stuff. You know what I'm saying? But like, like you said before, yeah, I am, I am internet savvy, tech savvy. I've been on f- Facebook, MySpace, flipping, every, I've been on everything. Bro. My space. Yeah, I used it in a way where it was just me being real and honest on the internet. As honest as I can. I don't want to give away my address and my, you know what I mean? But as honest and as open as I can on the internet and being myself on the internet. Whereas it's got to the point where people now see that you can get, I don't know, money. I don't know what it is. You can get something. Endorphin. social, Social currency. Social currency. You can get something from being as type of person on the internet. So then everyone's becoming, everyone's trying to be the type of person on the internet. When I, 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 was on, I was scrolling through YouTube today, because what was I doing? I think I was looking for a video about tire stickers. I use, YouTube, exactly. I use YouTube so much, but I use it for so many things. I use it to buy the right lights. I use it to, to help me hang something on the wall that's, that's, that, that's dot and dab, you know what I mean? I use yeah. it for so many different things, aerate my, my garden and whatever, but, <laughs> You could use it for the wrong thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think I use it the right, use the internet the right way. But then I go on, in, on uh, YouTube, I'm scrolling, but it, it plays the videos, but on mute, if you don't click it, it just like the, the thumbnail changes to the video playing. And I saw a guy go, like all I could see was him do this. And I'm thinking like, what are you doing? Like, I don't even want to press play, but this is what you have to do now. This yeah. like, I don't know what you're doing. You're probably explaining about how, I think it's it, like we're moving house or something that was a title. But I thought you don't have to do that. You're gonna say to the camera, yo man, like you can be yourself. Like I know that you, this person, whoever you are, when you're talking to your neighbor, you're not like outside like, hey, good morning, man. Yeah, or well, today I got out of bed and like I went to get to breakfast. And then you don't do that. Just be yourself. Just talk, you know what I mean? Like it's like people are being warped. It's, it's, it is Black Mirror. People are actually being warped into this thing. And I think that is so damaging for reality. And I realise as well this, everybody that I subscribe to and look at and watch on YouTube, you're, yourself included. Like I'm speaking to you now and I've watched you for years, years, years. years. I've seen, watched you review everything. I've watched you, I've seen everything. But it's like, you're you. This is who you are. You know what I mean? Like I'm talk- before we go live, we're talking on stream yesterday for the, the, the setup and everything. I'm talking to you and I'm like, yeah, this is you. I get you. I know, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, but there's people that I'll see on YouTube and I think when I see them in real life, that is not them. You know what I mean? That you can't be, that can't be you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think it's yeah, damaging. There's, there's, there's some serious overacting like on, yeah. on social and media for sure. Not only, not, not only do I think it's damaging for, not damaging, but I think like it's damaging for the people watching, sorry. It's also damaging for the people doing it. It's ruining lives in front of our eyes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think like, I don't, know the, I don't know the solution because I think the internet is obviously a great thing. YouTube, social media, it's a great thing. But I think I need to speak on it. If, if I think it, I'll speak on it. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening on the internet. And then streaming now, to God, streaming, sorry to ramble. <laughs> Look, streaming now. Now this is it's too long for me to answer. Streaming is too, uh, I'll All go right, well, too long. Well, well, I don't well, know how me, long you got. Let me, let me ask you a, a couple like fan questions that have been yeah. submitted. Um, uh, yeah. Quickly, uh, somebody wants to know if there's any news on a new uh, BBK project or anything right. uh, around the corner. Uh, I'll say Frisco, Frisco from BBK is mm-hmm. dropping. He's got like so many bombs to drop, so we're waiting for Frisco. Basically, he's got stuff, and it's it's got all of us on it and stuff. Whatever, whatever. I don't want to give away too much, but Frisco's going to drop something first. So everyone, get onto Frisco and say drop what you need to drop because Frisco needs to drop stuff. But um, yeah, from us as a whole, we've got a lot coming. 
that's the truth. We've got a lot coming. We've been working a lot. Like we always like we go to the studio in like I don't know, like three or four month intervals. We just end up going to the studio together and we're just making stuff. But we never put nothing out. I don't know why. We we we're not like a real band or anything. You know what I mean? We're just friends that just make music and we just some like one of us will have it like Jamma or or. Uh, even MSM, the engineer will just have the music and we'll listen to it and the rest of us will forget we even made it. We'll forget the lyrics, everything. So we go to the studio again, we're like, oh shit, like, put that one out, dude, you know what I mean? So yeah, we do need a little kick up the bum, but um, yeah, we, we're, we're getting there. We're, do it, we're, we're, we're getting there. But just get on to Frisco for that first. And then after Frisco has done his thing, we're gonna, we'll come back with whatever we've got. But yeah, from the, the last track we released was Athlete. And the day we made Athlete, we made like eight, nine other tracks. So yeah, don't worry, we've got, stuff to do but answer that question get on to frisco first okay um as e118 wants to know uh who's your favorite american rapper at the moment that's a hard question you know favorite american rapper can be a couple just throw anything out there i don't know man i don't know can i check my phone who's late last people last person whose music i bought from america Last American artist on my phone. Oh, it's Drake and Eddie One. Mm-hmm. He's North American, Canada. Canada. That's still, still America, North America. But uh, other than that, uh, Hop Smokes albums on my phone. L- um, Little Yachty. Yeah. Little Yachty, Little Boat Free. The, trun- the tune West Side on that album is okay. a banger and a half. West Side. I, bought, I don't think I've listened to any other tracks on this album. I bought it because of West Side and I've had West Side on repeat. I haven't got to listen to it. I'm someone that puts tracks on repeat. So it's on repeat, 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 and I forget to listen to the rest of the tracks. So yeah, other than that, honorable mention, Lil B. But yeah. It's kind of a mixed bag. So, you know, yeah. get through the rest of the record when you want. Um, people want to be reminded of uh, what's your Twitch channel again, so they can go over there, follow, sub. It's Bad Man Online, but don't sub, man, because I don't, it puts pressure on me. Like, Twitch <laughs> hates me. Like, they give me like a hundred pounds every couple months or whatever, and I'm like, why are you paying? Like people subscribing to me for what? For the little emotes or whatever. You can subscribe for the emotes. But um, other than that, I need to stream more. I do need to stream more. I'm going to get back on it, man. I had a child. A child took over. But now she's a big woman. She's like a two-year-old big woman. And yeah, I can stream now. So I'll be back on it. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, somebody wants to know, how, how many of the same do-rag do you own? Says, uh, says somebody. Too many. There's no number, like, I don't, I need to throw them away. Like, even this one, hmm. can you see? I don't know, yeah, you can see those, yeah, line there. Got it. Little line there. This do actually been thrown away, but I just always put them back that, in the drawer. That, in the that's wash. raw, that's raw though, that's real. You know, I know, but you know what it is, is once they're all washed, it's hard to sort them apart and look and see which, I just throw them, wash them, dry out in the garage, throw them back in the drawer when I want to put it on, I just forget. So yeah, I've got too many, man, too many. Uh, this next person <laughs> says, uh, let, let's see, Omni, uh, Omni Diaz. They want to know Blur o- or Oasis and why? Blur or Oasis? Yes. <laughs> Which one and why? I don't know, bro. I have no idea. I'll say, <laughs> I'll say Oasis. I, I'm trying to think of a Blur song. I can't think of a Blur song. Blur, blur, I just heard of Blur growing up. I didn't hear any Blur songs. But Oasis, I know Oasis songs, so I'll say Oasis. I mean, Blur, Damon Albarn, are you a fan of any uh, Gorilla stuff? You got to be. I'm not, you know. No? Nah. I, I, I was a, I'm a fan of the whole movement, the, the, the whole concept. But I can't tell you one song. I can't tell you one. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just a fan. of. I'm not even a fan. I'm just, I just admire the whole movement. And it was like something eye-opening for me and iconic for me. You know what mm. I mean? It reminds me of like the whole Gorillaz uh, thing. It reminds me of like the GTA kind of aesthetic in my head, like the whole vibe and that's something i wish i did something i wish i did there you go something i wish i did hmm. you know what i'm saying but oasis like at my wedding there was oasis songs playing at the dinner and stuff like you know what i mean like people singing along and stuff like so yeah i'll say oasis i have to uh, yeah, on, yeah. honestly i like i'm i'm surprised that uh, uh you know not not to say that you have or haven't you know uh heard a certain thing or whatever but uh uh, you know, considering how many different artists Albarn typically reaches out f- to for like an Oasis record, like you'd be a yeah. perfect, uh, not an Oasis record, but, you know, a Gorillaz record, you'd be a perfect yeah. fit for a, a Gorillaz record. I know they've done, they've done tracks with Flipping, uh, was it Slow Tie recently? Yeah. They've done yeah. Track with everyone. And I met him as well. I met him at a Kano show in Hammersmith. Hmm. He, he came out, I swear he played the piano. 
he did something at a Kano show. I'm sure I did a Kano show and he was there. I met him. He's a cool guy. But um, yeah. And, the, and we got mutual friends as well. My mutual friend introduced me. He was like, oh, his name. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I know him. I know his name. I know his music, everything. But literally, I just haven't had, like I said, I put music on repeat. I've never chosen a track and just put it on repeat. And that, that's been like the soundtrack to my day. Not yet. Maybe it will be at some point. Uh, this next person, Berserker, as far as, you know, we're talking about crossovers with other artists, uh, they want to know how you met Denzel Curry and when you consider making another song with him or someone like Jid or Corday. Yeah. Uh, Denzel, who's that? I, met him, I met him with a few other people. You know what? I did a festival in 2017 in mm. Australia. Mm. At, at the end of the year in Australia from like Boxing Day all the way around to like January the 5th or 6th in Australia doing a tour called FOMO. And like you do like a show in every city in Australia and New Zealand. And it's just like a bunch of artists, like it's crazy. And the weather's good, the vibe is good. It's like it's one of my favorite places on the planet. It reminds me of London so much, but with a, t a hint of like LA weather and you know what I mean? But the attitude is so nice. The people's attitude there is so nice. They're like, it's blessed anyway. But while yeah, I was over the, there- I, I agree, the Australian vibe is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And then once, once I was over there, uh, like from the festival, like I think it might have been a New Year's when, when, after the countdown. ASAP, ASAP was there as well. I remember Rocky was out there, everyone. But then, um, yeah, like shuttle buses leave the festival and like different artists just get on different shuttle buses back to the hotel. They book you all at the same hotel. So like everyone's trying to bring girls back to the hotel and stuff. That everything's going on. But I'm there with my wife and I'm, I'm there with like about six people. And then, um, yeah, so we went for a shuttle, we got on, and uh, it was a shuttle back, everyone's drinking and chilling and whatever on the thing. Like, on the way there to the festival, people are quiet, just waiting to get to their set. You know what I'm saying? Gold Link was there as well. And so I met everyone, basically, all of them. And then on the way back, I had a little speaker, a little UE boom, and on the bus, and I thought, you know what, like, I'm not with, I'm not with Jamma, Frisco, Skepta, no one, but if I was, we'd be playing music like on this bus back. So fuck it, man. I'm just gonna play some instrumentals. And also I'm Grant and everyone here is, most people there are all hip hop and American artists. I thought, fuck it, man. I'm gonna play, and I'm with my friends, play some beats. I started playing beats. Denzel was at the front of the bus. Like I'm at the back. He's at the front of the bus. He starts freestyling. He started freestyling. And I thought, to Grant, I thought, no, nah, this guy's cold. And then it was the spitting on the bus. And then when we got back to the hotel, he was like, nah, man, give me an email, give whatever, whatever. That was it. Gave him my email, gave him my number. And then since then, we just check up on each other. How, like, if I hear any stories or anything's happening near where he's living, I holler and see what was going on. Whenever he's in the UK, hollers and we go uh, do stuff. Oh yeah, also, randomly, he asked, he was in the UK and he asked me to come studio once. And the studio, my sister was on Beats One at the time and the studio was in the same building. So I went to see my sister and he was there, go to the studio. And then AJ Tracy came through as well. I was like, oh, bro. And then we did a track. We did a track. And it ended up being an AJ Tracy track featuring me and him. And then, yeah, so, so yeah, since then we've been planning to do more. You know what? He's got a tune out on GTA with, um, is it Corday? Who's he with? I can't remember who it is. It's called, it's called Aliens. Hmm. But I can't find it nowhere. It's only on GTA. Hmm. I have to ask him, like, I've, like, and I heard it on GTA and I thought this tune's cold and then I never heard it again. So I need to ask him for that. And maybe I'll be on a remix of that or I don't know what, but yeah, we'll do something in the future, definitely. But like I said, it's just real life over music, really. Someone just threw up in the chat a question that should have dawned on me. They want to know what you think of um, Little Sims. What do you think about her stuff and would you cross over with her on a track? Everybody, everybody thinks the same thing of Little Sims. Little Sims is rated highly by everyone. I don't think there's anyone. I don't think there's anyone that doesn't think that. Everybody Little. loves Little yeah. Sims. Every, yeah, there's nobody on the planet that can say, "Oh, I don't like Little Sims." No way. But it's just the thing with me and Little Sims is that, like I said, in real life, I have I'm yet to meet her and be in the same places as her and gel with her in real life. I can admire her. I admire her from a distance. Like I don't know where she's from in London. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know anything about it other than whenever I see her work, it's amazing. And I think, flipping hell, like, how? What? Like, what's going on? Like, well, you know, there's 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 seven thousand people watching right now. All you can do is just throw it out there. All you can do is just put it out there. And, and oh, definitely, most featured yeah. artists, isn't it? Most featured artists. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. You you forgot. You forgot you were the most featured artist exactly. for a second. Featured artist, but yeah, Little Sims is amazing. She knows she's amazing. She doesn't need me to tell her. But yeah, I just I don't know whether it's label situation. Some, especially with artists as well, there's always different situations that happen, like label situations, especially artists I like, hmm. like a few. I'll text them sometimes, like, what's going on? I'll be like, oh man, just with my label, man, I need to do this, I need to sort this out. So I don't know. I'm a, I'm, I've never been signed to a label in my life. I'm here 20 years deep. 
just me and my computer upstairs. Are, 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 you know, in, in terms of crossovers and collaborations, are there ever any like roadblocks that you end up hitting because, you know, you yourself have sort of decided to, you know, maintain very admirably the independent route, you know, sort of this whole time? Uh, no, 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 no roadblocks. It's just, um, it's like a stunted growth. Like basically people can't get to me. I don't have a manager. I don't have nothing. I've got a booking agent. That's why when you hollered, I said this, hollered my booking agent because she would just basically just hook it up without me having to post my email anywhere. Like, I've got a booking agent that does my booking so I don't have to worry about talking to people about money or getting to a show and the police have locked it off and I don't get paid. You know what I mean? So she sorts that out and then I've got a distributor that just makes sure my music gets onto iTunes and Amazon and whatever. That's it. Other than those two people and then my friends. Not like a, not like I'm signed to some company. They're two of my friends that work in places that can help me. So yeah, other than that, I don't have no one. So there'll be an artist I admire, like Denzel Curry. I would never be able to meet, I would never be able to, you know what I'm saying? Never be able to meet anyone. So yeah, that's the, it's like a little roadblock, a little hindrance that I have. Not roadblock, a little um, a stunt in my growth because I can't link other artists, how other artists link. They meet each other at the same studio sessions or their management will say, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Like I don't have none of that, it's just me. So anyone you've ever seen me on a track with spoke to me and met me and we did a track. They never said to my label, we need a feature from Jim, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little hindrance, but it's good, man, because I don't know, like it's, it's, it's genuine. Also, I'm friends with a lot of people that are in situations. So I kind of like cheat because I, through them, I get things, you know what I mean? Like through skeptic being with certain people, I get something or I might speak to Tiny and Tiny will be like, yeah, man, I'm, my distributor, you know what I mean? Like, you might help me. Like, my friends helped me get places from years back, from Tinchy Strider days, when Tinchy Strider was first signed, he would help me, he got, took me on tour and did, you know what I mean? So yeah, I've got friends. So my friends are my label. Um, th This next question is pretty interesting. We, we did sort of talk about and establish, like, the whole UK drill, you know, going to New York thing and sort of, you know, the circular influence of all of that. But um, sort of going back to that same topic, but with a slightly different angle, what's your take on someone like Drake when he hops on a track like War or a song with Hetty One? And when he does a verse, he's sort of like, as, as this person uh, for <laughs> phrases that they say British, I'm not mocking, that's how they typed yeah. it, um, you know, uses sort of British kind of a li little bit of an accent, a little bit of a flow, some of the lingo as well. It's not the same thing as like what a pop smoke does. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like he's on a UK drill beat, but he's doing his own thing. Like he sounds like he's heavily influenced by 50 Cent. You know, he's, he's got yeah. his own kind of vocal style, but Drake sort of embodies the voice, the lingo, the delivery, like to yeah. you, is that kind of a, a different thing? Is that a step in the wrong direction or does it not really matter because he is kind of tributing the style directly by collaborating with artists who are from that scene? It's a weird one because without the internet, without people uh, coercing, my, like making me think a certain way, the first thing I just think is he likes it. Hmm. The same way in the UK music, a lot of us are like, a lot of the UK artists, are African, but they will put on a Jamaican twang on certain words because it's our slang that we have in the UK. You know what I mean? It's, it's taken from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So you will see an African artist say something that is just Jamaican. Even me, I'll, I'll, I say Ross Clark, bare times. I say flip it, you know what I mean? Like there's bare things I say that is just, it's just UK slang that's taken from Jamaica, but I, you know what I mean? But it's just me being me. And I think he, if, if he wasn't the world's most famous artist, it wouldn't matter. Mm. Like Trey Mission, another artist from, from Canada, who can use as much UK slang as he wants, especially in Canada where we have nearly the same influences, whether it is Patois, whether it is, you know what I mean? We're, we're so similar regardless of music anyway. You know what I mean? We're more similar than US. We're more similar than Pop Smoke and UK. You know what I mean? Like. So I think he just likes it, but because he's Drake, it's a big deal because he's Drake, you know what I'm saying? But he just, it's something he likes, he does it, full stop. Not even on music. I remember someone sent me a video once, but even the, the trust me daddy things get to use for shutdown. And then one time it was like something like, man don't care about all that, yeah? On a video, someone's like, oh my God, duh, duh. but it's just, he likes it, so he says it. And it becomes a big thing because he's Drake, you know what I'm saying? Whereas I don't look at that, I look at the artistry. So on his track with Heady One, I was listening to it and I was thinking the whole way through, this is sick. Like, I can't believe 
that he's I can't believe that he know that he understands you know what I mean like in my head I think I can't believe he understands what's going on like the way he's flowing then he flipped it from a drill flow to a grind flow like something like Temper T will say something like don't know we got the shotgun there don't know the dun dun gun there or, or Skepta will say um God forgive me if I bust my nine God forgive me if I bust my nine I don't want to get locked up like shine whatever whatever I'm whispering because baby sleeping but yeah he Drake said don't let me have to buy my rifle Something, something, don't let me have to ride by high schools. Da, 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 da. Don't let me have to side by side you. Da, da. I'm thinking, this is mad. Like, in my opinion, all I'm thinking is this is cold. But then when I come up and go online, people are saying, why are you using this? Oh, why do you go off the air? I'm thinking, oh, like, am I wrong? Uh, you know I'm saying, like, I don't know what's going on, but then I just think maybe it's just the internet. Maybe it's just like, um, what's it called? Crowd uh, flock mentality. People, someone says something, people think, yeah, you know what, yeah. I think it's like cool to shit on Drake, you know what I'm saying? But me, I'm just an honest person. I think he's just a Canadian artist who gets the vibe. Before he was world famous Drake, he was already listening to Flippin, Craig David, Shola Amar, Dizzy Rascal. He knew about the UK music. He was already on it, he liked, he, this is what he likes. But yeah, I just think that because he's the biggest artist in the world, he is not allowed to like the music and try and be part of the music because no, you're, Biggest artist, you're Drake. You do need you need to do this. You came out doing this R and B hip hop stick. You know what I mean? I like, I think, I think it will happen if it was anyone. I reckon if it was, and now it won't because doesn't Nicki Minaj put on like a British accent sometimes? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? She she'll do a British accent in her character because she you yeah. know uh, like in a lot I've of her stuff. Okay, character. She, she she'd have different characters in her stuff. Yeah, I get um, you. I don't know, but, man. I I I think it's I think it's um. Yeah, so it's 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 a it's a it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. It's it's like people thinking, oh, he needs to pay homage. He like he's making this big, but it's really this guy's flow. Or and then some people are saying he should stick to this. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But in my opinion, I just think he likes it. He ain't gonna do it if you don't like it. It's not like he sees something that he thinks is big. And he thinks, I need to do this to stay big. He's Drake, bro. He don't need to do nothing. No, that's absolutely no. true. I mean, it's yeah. like, I've been critical. I, I, I've been I think critic he genuinely likes something. He will yeah. see something, hear something. He, he he's ears to the ground. He's got people around him showing him music. He listens to music every day. He hears new artists. He follows people that you do, that I don't even know of. I, I wouldn't even hear of this rapper. He follows this rapper. He likes his music, whatever. While he's playing music. That's his vibe. Then he will just do it on a track. And people will be like, no, you can't do that. I think, and I, also, I think he feeds off it. You know, I think he does it on purpose. Oh, he, it's, it's it's kind of a mix i mean i know i yeah. myself i've been critical of his tracks that go in that direction however i would never question whether or not he actually enjoys it like mm -hmm. you know when he was um you know doing crossover stuff with skepta for example like culturally at that time and business wise you know just in terms of his bottom line there's like nothing making him do that like yeah. clearly he's into the sound clearly he's into the music clearly he sees something legitimate in it that he wants to embody in some way you know mm. um and uh you know i, I think uh, you know your opinions coming from a place and you know it's a legitimate place it's a place of just observing and appreciating the technical artistry of it where most yeah. people because they're not artists and they're not making music themselves they're going to critique it more from just the optics angle of it like does yeah. it look good for a guy who is the most famous artist in the world and a Canadian yeah, yeah. artist to be just kind of like borrowing these lingos and flows when people just sort of perceive it as like, oh, you're disconnected from this. You don't own this. You're not a part of this. Like, why are you involving yourself? However, you know, as you said earlier, if it's if it's, it's if it's a paying homage thing, like he's done that, you know, it's yeah, like he's clearly exactly. referenced, collaborated with pointed to overtly like what's been going on in the UK scene for a little bit now. You know, it's not like he's just taking the sound and not collaborating with any drill artists, any UK artists and saying, you know, fuck them. I'm not going to acknowledge them. I'm not going to mention them. I'm not going to name them. He's, he's done, well, I guess, as far as you could expect in terms of just like uh, letting people know where it's coming from. Yeah. I think also, I think he, I think now you're making me think about it. He does it all on purpose, bro. He does it all on purpose. He does it on purpose. He knows what it, because like, if he's got his ear to the ground so much that he finds these new artists, finds these new flows, finds these new exciting things, he's got his ear to the ground. He must know that he's, also people are saying what they're saying. And he does it again and again and again. And it's with UK, it's with a dance hall, it's with, it's with everywhere out of America. You know what I mean? Because he can do it in America, it's fine. He can go and he can 
go and meet some down south rapper in America. He did. Remember when he was doing different flows? He did it. Remember he did the Migos flow as well. He done, he done, he done it before. And it's like. Yeah. It's, and anytime he's borrowing a flow yeah. or an idea or a style from someplace, it, yeah. it, it always generates controversy. Yeah, exactly. No, ma- no matter think, what it is. He knows, I, think he, I think he knows. Listen, he's seen scenes popping off in the UK. Everybody thinks, yeah, you know what? He likes it. I'm going to do it. He knows. He does it on purpose. So whoever asked that question, Drake made you ask. Drake, Drake's trolling you. He made you ask that question. For sure. And and it's it's Drake. also in the way that he uh, sort of um, markets and pushes his tracks out there as well. Because, you know, yeah. when Tusi Slide came out, the big conversation around that was like, oh, he's doing a TikTok track. He wants people to be dancing to this on TikTok. He wants it to be a, a TikTok thing, a viral TikTok thing. And, you know, again, it's, it's all in sort of like the marketing and the push and the angle of it or the style of it. Whenever he's doing something different or trying to adopt something or put his own presence into some new wave new sound new something like you said it generates conversation generates controversy yeah he's doing it on purpose i didn't even think about none of this till just now i didn't know about the tuesday slide tiktok thing nothing yeah definitely (laughs) definitely all right well um dude you've been a great conversation a great interview you've been amazing you've been fantastic thank you for rambling thank you for being so uh, you you've been a fucking open book dude and it's been amazing having me man and and thanks for thanks for staying up so late with us don't worry, yeah, man. Chat, got chat, chat says it's 3.30 a.m. Go to bed. Yeah, I know. But listen, normally in the morning, I'm up at 8, 7, doing breakfast for the baby. You get me? I'm off. I'm going to be sleeping. So you saved me, man. Thank you very much, bro. All Same right. time next week. Enjoy sleeping in. Love, bro. All right. Have a good one.